So ChatGPT has a powerful new feature that allows developers to build custom extensions for ChatGPT. You can think of this as giving superpowers to ChatGPT either to fetch information from the real world or take actions outside of the ChatGPT sandbox. I wrote my first ChatGPT extension by pasting the ChatGPT documentation right into ChatGPT and it helped me debug the first extension. I'm gonna show you how it works and how you can build your own ChatGPT extension. Now, there are two files that ChatGPT needs to be able to run and execute an extension. The first is the definition file for the plugin the extension itself. And this tells ChatGPT the icon and the description of the extension. It also has a machine readable or a machine instruction description. And this helps ChatGPT, this is kind of the prompt for the extension itself. You can specify if the extension has authentication. Uh, my example does not. It also specifies the API endpoint. And this is can be either on the web or if you're developing an extension on your local computer, it's able to access that as well. The second core file is the YAML file. This is the definition of the actual API itself. Uh, my API is very simple. It has only one endpoint called run, and that takes commands that can operate and interact with your shell. There's also a simple application that actually provides the API itself, and this is in one simple file. I think we have 37 lines in total, so pretty straightforward to get your head wrapped around what it's like to write a basic extension. Now, just to run through the lines of this program, it's pretty straightforward. The first couple lines, we're importing a couple libraries that are going to be useful for us. Flask is a simple application or a simple tool to use in Python to set up a very quick web server. Uh, I'll mention cores in a second. Uh, and then we're doing a couple of very simple things. One, we set up the well-known directory. This is the folder that contains some of the files that are specific to um, the plugins and the, and the extensions. So this is the definition file that we talked about, the API YAML file that we talked about as well. And we're just making sure that we return those files if the server asks for them. And so if we're getting a well-known file, one of the things in that particular directory, we're just going to return that from the directory. So pretty straightforward. Second is if we hit this file run. So if uh, the server API gets requested with slash run, we're going to look for and run the command. And the command is going to get the request with JSON, and we're going to put it in data, and then we're just going to get what the command is and drop it into the commands. And the way I've defined the definition file is that you can pass one or multiple commands. So if uh, OpenAPI plugins one or two combine several commands, they can actually chain the commands one after another. And so if there's no commands, we throw an error, and if there are commands, we go one after the other. We have a for loop to enumerate the commands and then just run a subprocess. And the, this tells the operating system to just run the command in the shell with the subprocess, return the results. We decode the lines, put them back into JSON, and then spit them back out. Now, one of the core things I discovered when building this application is that you need to enable Core S. Now, Cores is a way to get cross-origin resources. Normally, web service will not let you access things across origin from openai.com to your local machine. But if you enable Cores on your script, you're able to do that. The initial API files that I mentioned earlier, that API file and the YAML file have to be put into what's called a well-known directory, it's a special directory with a special name where it will look for those icons and those API definition files. But once you have that established, you can really be off to the races in terms of building that application. And even all that is really powerful. So let's run this extension and see what it can do. So this is the alpha build. Not everyone has access to the alpha build, but this is how you operate with the plugins. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the plugin store. And what I'm doing is I'm going to develop my own plugin. And so when you develop your own plugin, you can put in the address um, of that plugin. So this particular plugin is running on localhost on my local machine. And what it's going to do is it's going to look for that manifest file. And so when it finds that manifest file, it will validate it, make sure that it's understanding what that validation is, and it's gonna look at the specification of that file as well. Just make sure it understands everything about that. And you can see the little icon there. I'm gonna go ahead and install that. And so now I can see local shell command running. 
if I flip over to the actual extension itself running in this window, you can see it's running on localhost. And you can see it's getting these requests already for OpenAI, the YAML file for the API definition file as well. So I'm running a local web server, and it's able to interact and see all that information coming back. So I'm going to go ahead and select that plugin. And I can ask it really simple questions like, um, how many files are in my home folder? And so when the extension runs, it will actually interact with that shell. So you can see it's using the shell command extension. It's running it. And in here, you can see exactly the commands that it sends. So it sent a ls piped into a word count by line. And so it knows exactly there are 20 lines in the home directory. If I wanted to list out the files, I can do that as well. List any files that have a text extension. And so again, it can issue that command. I can pop that open and see exactly what it's doing. So it's listing by that. And you can see exactly the doc. And so there's three files. Again, normally this is closed, but you can see it's returning a particular document. Now, the cool thing about having an extension that runs locally in a machine is it's incredibly powerful. It's potentially also incredibly dangerous. I can actually create files. I can delete files. Uh, I can do potentially damaging things to my machine. So definitely don't use this in production. This is kind of experimentation. But um, I can say uh, write, write, uh, haiku about AI and save it as a text file in my home directory. So I can ask it to do that. I'm going to go ahead and go into my home directory here. Let's see. I've written a haiku, and I've saved it as AI haiku.txt in your home directory. And it's there. So it's able to interact and work with uh, my directory. I can ask it to delete the file, delete that file. And it can go ahead and do that too. So be careful <laughs> with using this extension. It could definitely do some damage. I could ask it to delete my entire uh, computer. I'm not sure if it would do that or not. I have seen that when I run certain commands, uh, uh, put my computer to sleep, that the training of OpenAI prevents it from doing certain actions. So here you can see that it actually says as an AI language model, I don't have the computer ability to put your computer to sleep. Even though it knows the exact command of how to do so on both Mac and Windows, it won't do it. Uh, sometimes I have to ask it really gently. Uh, please run that command. Um, We'll see if it does it. Usually, oh, OK, let's see. Will it put my computer to sleep? <laughs> wow. OK, that was so previous times it had not <laughs> actually put my computer to sleep, uh, but that time it actually did. So a uh, really cool example of a very basic uh, chat GPT extension. I think extensions are going to be a really, really exciting way to interact with ChatGPT. I think developers building ChatGPT extensions can really extend the capabilities of their products and technologies into everyday use cases. The cool thing about extensions in particular is you can use multiple extensions together. And so I can ask it to uh, talk to Expedia. Let's just do an example of that. So if I turn on an extension uh, Expedia and I turn on the command shell extension, so I'm asking it to research flights from Boston to SF uh, that are going next week and put them in a research.txt directory. So it's going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to combine the Expedia.com API and the Expedia extension. It's going to combine my local shell extension to actually save the file. And by using these things together, so by using these extensions together, it's able to do things that are significantly more helpful to end users. So I think this chat user experience, the combination of text user interface with a human element to it, the natural language element 
of chat user experience is really powerful way to interact with products. And I think it's gonna be the future wave of startups and technology. As a startup investor, I'm spending a lot of time on AI and ML, and investing a lot in early stage startups that are building products like this. I'm heavily investing in this area by launching an AI machine learning accelerator focused on helping companies with exactly these types of companies and products. If you're interested in that, definitely check out the link in the description. I'm Greg Reyes, till the next one.